And welcome back, everyone. I'm Ellen, and you're watching Scientific Mathematica. I'm back with the second cryptology video, this time on the Caesar or Shift cipher. And I decided to do the second because it's really, really similar to Aristocrats, except it's even easier, which is means it's really easy because Aristocrats is easy enough. But, but anyway, we're going to do this. So, I haven't found a website that will give you Caesar ciphers. But I do have this. And so, let's get right into the video. So, Caesar cipher is a shift cipher. It's also a monoalphabetic substitution cipher. Which makes it really easy. And so, like aristocrats, every letter replaces another. No letter can decode to itself. But the easiest thing about this is it's a shift cipher, meaning as long as you have a table, everything is solved for you. I'll give you an example. You have, for example, let me type the alphabet here. You have that. And a shift cipher basically means that the entire alphabet stays in that order, but it's shifted over a certain amount. Meaning, for example, if there's a shift of three, we'd have everything would be shifted. Everything would be shifted three over. Meaning that X would be letter A. You shift everything to the left. And so basically what you do is you type out the rest of the alphabet. And basically what you have is the top line, it's the plain text. You always have plain text and a cipher text. Plain text is what comes out of it. Cipher text is the stuff you need to decode. And so basically you end up with that. And it's quite simple. And so I'm gonna give you an example. You're gonna have to guess the shift. And how I do it is I take a look at a frequency chart, like I mentioned in the previous video. I'll send a video a photo of that and so what you do i have cipher text here so you have to figure out what it is it's this one's not that long because i don't want to leave it too long but actually um longer caesar ciphers are easier so i'm going to give you the alphabet here. Let's make that bigger. And what we're going to do is fill it out, basically. And so what we need to do is find out the shift, because once we do that, we have the rest for every letter. And we're going to look here. Already, I noticed there's two of the same words, Q, E, B. And like I said, there's most likely, like really likely, that the word the exists in the sentence because, well, it's the word the. It comes before nouns, and there's always got to be a subject in a sentence, meaning now basic English rules. But I'm not teaching English here, I'm teaching math, cryptology. And so we're going to just, like, like any aristocrat, or any substitution cipher, we're gonna guess. So I'm just gonna assume this is T, the, and I'm gonna go through, the, that means I'm gonna fill out every letter with the same thing. But first I'm gonna plug in the key because that's the easiest. And so Q, where's Q? Here's Q, I'm gonna put a T there. And maybe for E, I'm gonna put a H there. And then for B, I'm going to put an E. And 
the first thing you do is plug in the rest of the alphabet, see if it fits. So if I put F, G, it fits, E, F, G, H. And then I'm just gonna go and plug in the rest of the alphabet, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S. And you realize it fits, meaning you have the shift. And so what you do, so you keep going. T U V W X Y Z. Once you get to C Z, you start over from A, A B C, and meaning this can only be D, and it's that simple. You fill it out, and so now you take this, and you're going to do exactly so. N, if you if you go to where the N is, which is right here, right here, and you look down directly under is Q, and so you have the Q R. You just keep going. Where's the R? U. Also, remember letter rules. The U Q always comes with a U after. So if there's a Q, consider yourself lucky because you just got yourself two letters. Anyway, F I C C H K. And basically, what you do why is how did that happen? Jumps over. Anyway, you end up with that. Did I forget a... I think I forgot to copy one letter. Oh, well, there's a D here. Anyway, you end up with the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Just because of the shift step. It's that easy. And this is quite a short video. So I want to provide you with another example. So I'm going to give you another ciphertext, ending this all goes goodbye. So I'm going to give you another ciphertext, ending this all goes goodbye. Ciphertext. This one's really short, which means it'll be harder, but that's it's a challenge, right? And so, the first thing I realized, no spaces. So I'm going to give them to you because I'm not that mean. And you're still learning. So that's where the spaces go. Whoops. You're going to have to figure out exactly what the letters are. And so, this is going to be hard because it's really short. But once you get one letter, you get all of them. So first thing you think, what letter can repeat twice? Usually you have E, L, P, T, that's about it. And so I'm just gonna guess. And because E came to mind first, I'm gonna put E there, two E's. And which would mean, I'd plug it in to the X. And since it's a shift cipher, every letter must go like that. And so I end up, whoops, let me delete that space and fill it in. H, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z, A, B, C, D. Anyway, that would mean there's a shift of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Anyway, and you have that. And you might be like, okay, if I have the answer, it should make sense. So you're going to fill it in. L-E-E-L-G-N. And that's not a word. So you're going to try again. You're going to completely delete that. And that. And the next letter I said was L, I believe. And so you can try that as well. And then you do the exact same thing. Plug in all the letters. 
from x. So you'd go L M N. Basically, you just fill it in from A once you get to the end. Whoops. O P Q R S T. O P Q. Oh my God. O P Q R S T U V W X Y Z A B C D E F G H I J K. She perfectly fit. And you have that. And you're gonna try again. E decodes to S. And already that does not make sense. So you try all over again. Next letter I said was T, I believe. And so we're gonna try that. If X were to decode to T, we'd have UV. And then W, X, Y, Z, A, B, C, D. And so we have that. And we do the same thing over. E is A. So we put A there. A. G is C. Oh, whoops. I might have done the spaces wrong. I'm sorry. Anyway. It doesn't change much. You have a K for the O. For E, you have an A. X is T. And you end up with the message that says, wait, what is this? O and C, E. You end up with the message that says attack at once. And that is also known as your plain text. And so you have decoded. That's what. That's literally what shift cipher is. Once you figure out the shift, you basically just get the entire thing. And if they ask for them to shift, you just count. The A is right here, a little from far from the A. And you'd figure out it's four letters away. So the shift is four. It's that simple. And that's what Caesar cipher is. And so. And so I really hope you learned something in this video. Caesar or shift cipher. It's quite simple. And that's pretty much it. And so um, I might do another cryptology video. This next one will be much longer, possibly on something we know as hill cipher. Or everyone's nightmare, basically. It's a very complicated cipher. It's math, a lot of math. And the thing about Hill Cipher is it's extremely complicated. You need to know what matrix matrices are. But after a short, maybe two part tutorial, I think you'll get it. So thanks for watching. Remember, this is Science of Your Mathematica, and our mission is to help you love science and math because it's our future. You might as well love it. And I'll see you next time.